Hi, we're continuing our series on the ABCs of HOAs, and today I'm going to be talking about rental restrictions. Rental restrictions can usually be found in the CCNRs, the Covenants, Codes, and Restrictions of the HOAs, and not all HOAs have them. Many of the older ones actually tend to have more uh, rent restrictions than not, uh, but it's important if you need to have a rental a situation, um, if you need to be able to have that flexibility, then it's important to look at your CCNRs and make sure that you understand uh, what, if any, are the rental restrictions of a specific HOA. Uh, why do they do them? Well, I'll go into that in a little more detail later, but the main thinking is that uh, in general, renters are not going to care quite as much as the owner occupants in terms of taking care of their individual unit as well as the rest of the complex. So um, so many of the HOAs, uh, because of that, have decided to uh, include rental restrictions in their operating procedures in the CCNRs. So what kind of rental restrictions are there? Where, well, the most common one that you'll see it has to do with the number of rentals. So you'll see in the CCNRs where they say you can have only 30% of units or a specific number, 25, 4, uh, 10 uh, number of units that can be rented at any specific time, um, at any one time. So that will be one of the more, more common ones that are out there. So just to make a note that as of uh, January 1st, 2021, uh, there was a California law, the California Civil Code 4741, that was enacted to say that any restrictions capping the number of rentals to less than 25% are no longer permitted. So the caps can be 25, 30, 35%. Usually you don't see them higher than that. Uh, it's generally gonna be 25 to 35%. But HOAs, if they have a rent cap that is uh, less than that, at say 20%, uh, they're not allowed to, uh, they, they actually need to change it out um, or they cannot enforce that 20% number. They have to allow for the 25%. Uh, number and this is the uh, part of California's response to the housing shortage that we have, especially rental housing. The second type of the rental restrictions that we'll have to see have to do have to do with the terms of the rental itself. For the terms of the rental, uh, one of the first ones that you'll see very commonly, uh, most HOAs will have a clause restricting short-term rentals of 30 days or less. Uh, for example, Airbnb or VRBO or any of those short-term rentals where people come in and out, um, only stay a few days or a week or more at a time. Uh, most HOAs will actually restrict that kind of activity. You can kind of understand that if there is some concern about tenants in general, uh, it's going to really be exacerbated if you have tenants who are only staying for a few days or weeks at a time because they really aren't going to care so much about the community. And so, uh, and if you're in a, especially a condo community where the units are close to each other, you really don't want to have a lot of uh, turnover, a lot of people coming uh, in and out. Their uh, terms of rental could actually also have something like a minimum or maximum lease term. So there could be, uh, you might find in an HOA in CCNR uh, that, well, you have to have a minimum of six months or a minimum of a year, or you can only have a maximum of nine months or a year uh, and then to be renewed. So there may be, uh, you may find things like that as well in terms of the rental restrictions uh, and then occupancy limits. So there may be limits to how many people can actually go into a unit. Uh, many of the, if you see that, then um, many of them will follow the rule by the California Department of Fair Employment and Housing, DEFEH. Uh, that is the two plus one formula, which is saying if you have a, uh, you would count literally two people per bedroom and then one additional person for the living space. So if you had a one bedroom apartment, you could theoretically, um, you could have allow for uh, three people to be living there. If you have a two bedroom, then that would be limited to five people and so on. Uh, for a studio, that would be two, uh, that would be maximized at two. Um, going back to this California Civil Code 4741 from 2021, uh, there are some adjustments that have been made. So owners can now create valid rental agreements lasting 31 days or longer. So if you do see in a CCNR um, that there is a six month or one year minimum, that is no longer, they can no longer require that. It has to be, um, as long as it's 31 days or more, that has to be allowed in terms of a rental. Uh, a second point, another point to that is the owner who lives in a unit 
is allowed to rent out a part of their property. So if, say, somebody has a two-bedroom unit and they want to rent out one bedroom uh, as a long-term uh, rental, not the 30 days, not the less than uh, 30 days or less, but if they do want to have a long-term tenant in the second bedroom or uh, whatever is, makes sense, uh, that will not count toward the rent cap. So the association cannot disallow it based on the number of rentals that are already in the complex. So besides that, there are a few others that uh, in terms of rental restrictions that you may see, there's an initial owner occupancy period, which basically means that they may say, well, if you buy this condo, you may need to, uh, you'll have to live there for at least two years, the first two years or the first three years. Um, and then after which you may either be able to rent it out or you may have to go to a waiting list. Uh, waiting list procedures may be in place where they actually have a standing waiting list uh, with the property manager. And so as soon as um, a rental option comes up, that will, you know, it will go to the next person on the waiting list. Some complexes choose to not have a standing waiting list and instead will have a um you know, a different procedure where maybe uh, once an opportunity comes up, they'll broadcast that to all the homeowners and then the homeowners um, can uh, apply and say that they're interested in renting out their property. Uh, and then it will go uh, by seniority to whoever has owned their condo the longest. So there are going to be different procedures like that. There is no set requirement as to how to take care of that. Um, and then also there may be some lease requirements. So do you uh, do you need to have the tenant fill out a standard form, an information form for the HOA? Uh, is it required that you have, uh, you send a copy of the lease that that is registered with the HOA? So there may be different things like that that also uh, come into play in these rental restrictions. So that's pretty much it in terms of the rental restrictions. Are they good or bad? Well, uh, first point about this, I would say, is there is a high li higher likelihood of residents who care about the unit and the complex. Uh, I was a renter for many years, and I'd like to think that I was a good tenant, uh, but just it just makes sense that people who actually own a condo um, to own the property uh, may have a, take a little bit more care about uh, how about making sure to maintain the condition and also may care a little bit more about the complex itself because the owners actually do have a certain percentage ownership of the uh, common areas and amenities. Uh, another point about this, I would say, is that if you do have uh, uh, many tenants in a complex, a higher percent of tenants, then there may be lender restrictions on this. So uh, because lenders don't like to see a high percentage of tenants. So that's something just to keep in mind. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of HOAs actually did enact the rental restrictions in the first place. In terms of the impact on resale value, I would say it's both good and bad. Um, it can be good for buyers who are planning to occupy a con a occupy a condo themselves because they may feel like, well, it's good to know that most of your neighbors, majority of your neighbors are actually people who um, also uh, are owners and kind of have a have a vested interest in making sure that the complex stays, uh, you know, a good environment and uh, safe and uh, clean, all of that. Um, it's not necessarily as good in terms of uh, resale value when you come to, when it comes to investors. So a lot of times the condos it may you may have uh, buyers who are looking to purchase investment property, and if there is a, a rental restriction, obviously those buyers are not going to be interested. And if that's the case, you lose some a good portion of the potential buyers. Then that will always, you know, uh, the rule of you know, just thinking about supply and demand that could have an impact in terms of your resale value, just because there will be fewer buyers who are interested in that condo. And the last point I would make about this is life happens and needs may change. So you may, uh, you know, someone may be purchasing a condo thinking that, well, I'm going to go, um, I'm going to live in it for many years you know, by myself and not really plan to own it as an investment property, but um, life may happen and uh, there may be a job relocation involved. There may be uh, family issues, personal issues, health issues that come up, which make it, uh, or you might need to move somewhere quickly and 
want to keep the condo still as a rental property and in that case might not be able to do so and might just have to sell so um, that's just something to keep in mind um, I know that there if there are some hardship circumstances and things that come up very quickly um, you might be able to appeal to the HOA board to get an exception some kind of a hard case hardship exemption but you don't want to rely on that so again it's important for you to uh, really understand and and uh, be aware of the um, what you what you can and cannot do when it comes to rentals. So in conclusion, I'll just wrap it up by saying sellers, make sure you know your HOA restrictions, HOA restrictions, and be sure to disclose to all potential buyers. Uh, really to add to that, be aware that uh, this rental risk, if you have a rental restriction, it may lower the buyer pool a little bit and take a little bit longer to sell and the price might not be as high as you'd like. Um, not always, but that might be the case. So just manage your expectations. And um, definitely be sure to disclose to all potential buyers because you don't want a case, a situation where you accept an offer and uh, you're excited, the buyer's excited, and then find out that, well, the buyers really need to have that rental possibility. And so they end up backing out. Uh, definitely you don't want to be in a situation where they go through the whole sale and then end up unhappy because they realized um, and it wasn't made clear to them that they could not rent out the property. And if you're a buyer, you know, definitely, if it's important to you to have that rental option, be sure to ask about this, you know, look at your CCNRs, talk to your real estate agent, and make sure that you know what you're getting into, because that's really important more than anything else. So that pretty much does it for the rental restrictions on HOAs for this time. Um, thanks for watching, and please be sure to subscribe and follow us for future videos. If you have any specific questions, I'd love to hear from you, or you can put them in the comments, and then I'll be sure to address those in future videos. So again, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more.